This video is on triangle theorems. First thing when you are dealing with triangles is you need to determine is it a triangle. Even though it might look like a triangle, even though the measurements might seem like they're a triangle, they might not be an actual triangle. In geometry, <clears throat> things are not always drawn to scale. So again, it might look like it is, but it might not actually be one. So to form a triangle, the two sides actually need to make sure that they close before they hit the third side. So these can form a triangle because these lengths close before they hit the base of 7. However, this figure cannot form a triangle because the 4 and 2, as they start to close, they'll, cl they'll never actually touch each other, so therefore it will not be a closed figure. Because 4 and 2 together equals a 6, so then we have, if we were talking about inches, we'd have 7 inches here, 4 inches, and 2 inches. We would have 6 inches, so we'd have an inch left over to where it wouldn't close. So what we want to make sure we can do is understand the triangle inequality theorem. It states that the sum of the two smaller legs of a triangle is greater than the larger leg. <clears throat> so you figure out what your two smaller sides are, and just determine if it's bigger than your third side. So if we use the letters A plus B is greater than C. It doesn't matter which legs are A, B, and C. Just make sure you know that you these are the two smaller sides, and then C should be your largest side. Now, it says it has to be greater than. It does not say equal. Not equal. If it's equal, that means that the legs will close and form a line which will not form a triangle, which is why it has to close before it hits the base. So here are four examples. We're going to determine if it does form a triangle or not. We look for your two smaller sides, which are one and one. So we do one plus one is supposed to be greater than six. One plus one is two. Two is not greater than 6. So we do 2 is greater than 6, we have a question mark. That is not true. 2 is not bigger than 6. That means that no, this is not a triangle. This is not a triangle. If you look at example B, notice that the numbers are not in order and that's okay. You just need to find your two smaller sides. Your two smaller sides are your 7 and 9. So this, this is your A, this is your B, and 21 will be your C. So you got to make sure you see what the numbers are. Always put them in order. So we have 7 plus 9 wants to be greater than 21. 7 plus 9 is 16. Is 16 greater than 21? No. <clears throat> 16 is smaller, therefore this is not a triangle. These three side lengths will not form a triangle because it'll it will ne never close. On example C, again you want to find, because they're not in order, you want to find your A, B, and C. Your A and B are your two smaller sides, so 6 is your A, 8 is your B, and then C will be your 10. So we do 6 plus 8, and we ask is it greater than 10? 6 plus 8 is 14. Is that greater than 10? Yes. 14 is greater than 10, therefore this is a triangle. These three lengths will form a triangle. This last example, we have our two smaller sides. Our 3 is A, our 8 is B, and our 11 is C. So we go ahead and put them in order. It's already in order, so 3 plus 8 is bigger than 11. So 3 plus 8 is 11. Is 11 bigger than 11? No, it's not. Since it's not bigger than, because 11 is equal to 11, but it needs to be bigger than. <clears throat> so since it's not bigger than, this is not a triangle. will not form a triangle. Because what will happen is the, the two smaller sides will close, but it will form a line on top of the other line. It will not actually form a triangle. These will close before it hits the base of 10. So if we look, use these, our two smaller sides are 4 and 5. 4 plus 5 is 9, 
which is bigger than 7, so that's why it forms a triangle. But on this one, 4 plus 2 is 6, which is not bigger than 7, which is why it will not form a triangle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once you determine if it is a triangle, you can determine what type of triangle. When we're dealing with what types of triangles, one theorem that you might have heard of before is the Pythagorean theorem. It states that if a triangle is a right triangle, so Pythagorean theorem only works in right triangles, then the sum of the squares of the length of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. What this really means is you know, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. That's just leg squared plus leg squared equals, says so it's sum of them, is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So it's equal to your hypotenuse squared. Now, to remember, your hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So your hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. It's always opposite of the right angle. And the hypotenuse should always be your largest side because it's across from the largest angle in a right triangle. So if triangle ABC is a right triangle, and it is because we can see the box down there, we have our two legs, A and B, and this is our hypotenuse. This is your right angle, therefore across from your right angle is your hypotenuse. Your C is your hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. So our leg is A, so we do A squared. Leg is B plus B squared equals your hypotenuse squared, which is C. So we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is, again, this might be a uh, theorem that you've heard before. You use it with right triangles. So an example for this, <clears throat> it's a word problem. It says Jamal leans a 12-foot long ladder along the side of the house. The base of the ladder is four feet from the house. To the nearest tenth of a foot, how high on the house does the ladder reach? Since this is a word problem, let's draw a figure to help us represent this. So it says Jamal leans a 12 foot long ladder along the side of a house. So we have a house. We know the house is going up and down. We know the ladder is leaning against the house. So we know the ladder is leaning against it. And we know that the, they're both on the ground. They both at least touch the ground. So we know the house and the ground should be a right angle. So it says Jamal leans a 12 foot long ladder. This was the ladder, so this is where we put our 12. That's our hypotenuse. It says the base of the ladder, which is right here, is 4 feet from the house. So it's going to be 4 feet from the house. That 4 feet is along that base. We put the 4 down here says to the nearest tenth of a foot, so we're going to round, how high on the house does the ladder reach? This is where we put our x. So using the Pythagorean theorem, since this is a right triangle, we have our leg squared, so it's x squared, plus our leg squared, so it's 4 squared, is equal to our hypotenuse squared, which is 12 squared. So we have x squared plus 16 is equal to 144. We subtract the 16, we get x squared equals 128, and then we square root it to get rid of the square. So to the nearest tenth of a foot, x is approximately 11 and 3 tenths feet. It means that the ladder is reaching up to about 11, a little over 11 feet on the house. We know it can't reach past 12 because that's how tall the ladder is, but we don't want to have the ladder going straight up because then it'll just fall. So that's why it's leaning against it and it's not reaching all the way up to 12. So this answer makes sense to the context of the problem because we know it can't be above 12 and we know it's going up onto the house. Now, that's if your triangle is a right triangle. You can use the Pythagorean theorem if your triangle is a right triangle. 
So if it is a triangle, but it's not a right triangle, how do you determine what kind it is? So the Pythagorean triple state that it's a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem, which can classify not only right triangles, but obtuse and acute triangles as well. So you can actually use the Pythagorean theorem, a variation of the Pythagorean theorem, to determine what type of triangle you have. But this, again, is if it is a triangle. So if it is a triangle. You follow these variations. So you first have to see if A plus B is bigger than C. Then, if it is, then you can go to here. If A plus B is not bigger than C, you can't go to here because it's not a triangle. So, if it is a triangle, you've proven that it is a triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. You do your two smaller sides squared. So it's a squared plus b squared. And then we see about the c squared. We, it really depends on what the c squared is. So we get our two numbers. If your c squared is equal to your a squared plus b squared, it's going to be a right triangle. If your c squared is equal to the other part, you're going to have a right triangle. If your c squared is bigger than your a squared plus b squared, you're going to have an obtuse triangle. And if your c squared is smaller than the rest of it, you're going to have an acute triangle. So we use the Pythagorean theorem as a variation. Again, this is if it already is a triangle. To determine if it is a triangle, you do first, so the first step you do is you do A plus B is greater than C. If this works, if that works, then you do your A squared plus B squared and you figure out how your c squared is related to it. This is what we figure out. If this part does not work, if we do not get a check mark on here, then we cannot go down to the second to the then. We cannot do this if we get an, if we do not get a check mark. So if this doesn't work, this can't work. If it's not a triangle, it cannot be a right or obtuse or acute triangle. Because it's not a triangle. So let's do a couple I'm gonna do a couple of examples. We have four examples over here. We're going to classify the triangles. If it is in fact a triangle. So to determine first, we're gonna classify the triangles by angles. It's always gonna be by angle. It's gonna be a right, obtuse, or acute. It's gonna be a right, acute, or obtuse. So this is gonna be by angle. By angle. So the first thing you need to do is determine if it is a triangle. So we're going to put a check mark or an X first. So we do our two smaller sides, 5.5 plus 30. That is 35.5. That is bigger than 32.5, so this is good. This is a check mark. That means that we can go to the second spot. So now we worry about our A squared plus B squared is greater than C squared, or equal to or less than. So we're going to figure that out. So 5.5 squared, so we have 5.5 squared, because that's our A, plus 30 squared is what to 32.5 squared? That's what we're trying to figure out. So using our calculator, using our calculator, we find 5.5 squared plus 30 squared is 930 and 25 hundredths. So my little box here. And then 32.5 squared is 1,056 and 25 hundredths. So we figure out if what this number is. Is this number bigger, smaller, or equal? This number is bigger. So if C squared is bigger, 
it's an obtuse triangle. So this is an obtuse triangle. This is an obtuse triangle. Example B, first determine if it is a triangle. Two smaller sides, 4 plus 9 is 13, which is bigger than 12, so that means that this is a check mark. We can go and determine what type of triangle it is now. So we start with 4 squared as our A. 4 squared plus 9 squared is what to 12 squared? So 4 squared plus 9 squared, using our calculator, is 97. Box. 12 squared is 144. So again, we look at what is 144. Is 144 bigger or smaller or equal? So 144 is bigger. So if C squared is bigger, it's an obtuse triangle. This is an obtuse triangle. Example C, they're not in the correct order, so we have to have our two smaller sides, which are 3 and 7, so determine if it's a triangle. 3 plus 7 is 10, and 10 is not bigger than 11, so we can't go any further. This is not even a triangle, so we cannot go further. So again, we look back first, we determine if this works. If it does, then we can go further, but if it's not a triangle, it can't be one of these types of triangles because it's not a triangle at all. Our last example, we have two of the same sides, so we still deal with the small side is 3. The next one will be a 4, even though it's the same size as these. That's okay. So 3 plus 4 is 7, which is bigger than 4, so this is a triangle. And now we determine what kind. So now we do our A was 3 plus 4 squared is what to 4 squared? So 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 25. And we ask, what is it to 4 squared is 16? So again, we focus on the 16. Is a 16 bigger, smaller, or equal? 16 is actually smaller. So you see how it's actually, it's almost like an alligator. It's eating the bigger number. So the 16 is what we care about. The 16 is smaller. So if it's smaller, then it's an acute triangle. So this would form an acute triangle. So once you determine it is a triangle, you can determine what type of triangle it is. But you have to make sure that it is a triangle first, and then you can determine what type of triangle. And it's all based on the C squared. If C squared is equal, C squared is bigger if C squared is smaller.